Uh, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to look at Filmic Pro uh, app, in this case for the iPhone. Um, we're on an iPhone SE here and uh, we are going to have a look through the main features, um, through the menu and through operations um, to make sure that you get the best quality image in camera um, for the best results in post-production. You can see here I'm recording the uh, screen of the iPhone SE actually. I've set up a little mini, I don't know, studio here on the coffee table. Um, I've got some nice light, natural light, early morning light coming in from the window. Um, so I want to take advantage of that. This is how you'll see the display interface of Filmic Pro when you start it up. And you'll notice on the bottom here you'll have a little gear wheel. So when you press the little gear wheel, you'll get to the main menu. Um, we're going to go through the menu here. So let's look at the first one's resolution. Let's see what we got. By default, we're on 1080p, 32 megabits per second. Um, really, you want to you want to ramp that up. Um, you've also got crop overlays here. As you select, you can see how it affects the image in the background. Um, I'd suggest staying on 16 by 9 so you you capture everything. Um, for most purposes, unless you really want to do some higher frame rate, um, I would stick to 4K 2160p. It gives you more uh, bit rate, higher bit rate. You can go up to 100 megabits per second there. Um, and it gives you more flexibility in post as well. Um, and I like to oversample. So I'd stick at 4K unless you absolutely need for special shots to get the higher frame rates. And then you can go down to 1080p. We're at the highest bit rate for 4K, which is 100 megabits per second. Always capture the highest bit rate you can. I'm gonna have a look at frame rate. We're at 24 frames a second here. That's where we wanna be for that more cinematic look. Audio, I don't really care about audio in this case, but you can change the, uh, the source of the uh, microphone, uh, iPhone microphone front or iPhone microphone back. Uh, you can change the format. We're just gonna stick with that. 48 kilohertz is fine. Again, we're not really, well, we can just even record video only. We don't care about audio for this. Uh, automatic gain correction. I mean, these things you might want to look at if you've got an external uh, audio device plugged in, which is an option. And presets, you can save your settings as, as presets so you can pull them up later. It's especially useful when you're out shooting and you need to quickly change settings. In hardware, we've got options for the Moondog anamorphic adapter. We've got options for 35mm adapter, which is basically needing an image flip. We've got DJI Osmo Mobile, we've got various things down here, so uh, we don't really need, we don't have any of that right now. Our priority is to be recording the best quality image possible. Um, we can't do everything in post adjustment wise that we could if we were recording raw or if we were recording on a higher dynamic range, larger sensor cinema camera. The most important thing when shooting video with your smartphone is to ensure that your exposure is as spot on as possible. Uh, there's really very little you can do to adjust in post later on. Now, the image sensor in most smartphones has a limited dynamic range. Uh, dynamic range just basically means the difference in brightness or the difference in luminance between your brightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image. When that range is limited, you're not able to capture the full range of luminance information. So there's inevitably need for some compromise and you need to decide creatively uh, where that compromise is. Do you protect the highlights and risk losing image information in the shadows? Or do you make sure you capture all the image information in the shadows and let the highlights go? Now, you've got to be careful doing that because the sensors in most smartphones do not render very good highlight roll-off. When your highlights are clipped, it looks pretty bad and there's not really anything you can do to soften that in post. We are going to take a look here now with our little scene of what we can do. So you've got your focus point here, which will focus wherever you put it on your screen. So that's very useful. 
You've got your exposure control here, which will control your exposure for wherever you've placed it over your image. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that smartphones have a fixed aperture lens. That means you're not actually adjusting your iris here. There is no iris. What you're adjusting is your shutter speed. So we want to keep as slow a shutter speed as possible to mimic 180 degree uh, shutter angle of a film camera. It's an easy calculation. If you're shooting at 24 frames a second and you want to mimic 180 degree shutter angle, 180 degrees is half of 360 degrees, so it's going to be twice the speed of your frame rate. So in this case from 24 frames a second we're looking at close to a 48th of a second shutter speed. Now, when there's a lot of light, that's difficult because you're gonna find yourself overexposed. Now I have here a Tiffin Iron D9, which is a three-stop production. And it's just a four inch by four inch uh, cinema filter. Um, I don't have any means of attaching it to the uh, camera or anything at this stage, but you can see how it affects the image and how it affects the exposure when it's placed over the camera lens. And that's a really big help when you're trying to keep a slow shutter speed uh, under bright conditions. You will definitely need to be looking at some kind of a solution for using NDs or preferably IR NDs that cut out infrared pollution as well. Now, with both of these markers, um, when you want to lock your exposure, you just tap it. It goes red. Same with focus. When you want to lock your focus point, you just tap it and it goes red. That's locked now. That will not shift. It will not change. You can move the camera. The light can move. It will not change. You are going to hold down on the little exposure icon, and these settings on the side will pop up. As we move our ISO up and down, you'll see our exposures changing. Um, now for the iPhone camera, it's closest to native at around, I, I've guessed at around ISO 50, it may be less. Setting these upper and lower limits will limit the auto ISO compensation when you do not have your exposure locked. Um, we're going to have it locked, so I'm not too worried about that. We're going to stick it at ISO 49 is fine. Next up is shutter angle or shutter speed. You can see how the exposure changes when we change our uh, shutter angle. Um, so we're going to set our shutter angle at 48th of a second and that's where we want to be. Um, the next setting is exposure compensation which is just gain basically. We want to leave that alone. Um, so yeah, we can click out of that. Okay, so we've come out of that menu now and we've set and locked our exposure. We're going to lose a little bit of detail on the um, specular highlights that are coming up on the uh, top uh, right hand corner, the rim, the edge of the camera body there. Um, but overall, I'm happy with that. Depending on your type of shot, you may want to move into manual focus mode. We'll use the autofocus in this case. Um, but if you want to use manual focus, um, you just hold down your little icon and you will get manual focus control. Now, the same as with the exposure, you can set upper and lower limits to limit the range that autofocus will try to focus or drift um, when you're in automatic focus mode. Um, but we don't care about that so much. So let's just stick it on. Uh, autofocus, we will focus up here, which is where we want to focus, and we'll tap it to lock it. One thing I forgot to mention is the manual white balance adjustment. And you'll notice our scene here has changed a little bit, and that's because I've recorded this afterwards. Now if you hold down the white balance icon in the bottom left hand corner, it will bring up a manual slider control, just like you've seen for focus and for shutter speed. And it's measured in degrees Kelvin, and you can set your white balance exactly as you want. There's also a tint control, which gives you plus or minus green magenta adjustment as you might need.
Now, the reason I forgot about it is because the auto white balance is usually spot on, so I don't usually adjust it. But it is a very professional feature there, especially with the uh, magenta green uh, compensation. And so it's there if you need it. So it's as simple as that. All our settings are set, everything's locked. Um, now we're ready to hit record. So we just hit the red record button and we record. We're recording. You can see the time code moves up. We'll just have, you know, just a, a short shot of this. Now you'll be able to see the clips that you've recorded when you go to your little gallery there. Um, we've only recorded one clip, but it'll give you the file size. It will give you the metadata there and we can come out of that. We're going to record a little sequence here. Um, just loading some film into the camera so we can get it into post later. This is a wide angle lens actually that comes with uh, the iographer kit. Um, and yeah, it comes with in two pieces, the wide angle part and the macro part. Um, let's see what we can get with just the macro part. Let's screw this on. Let's screw that guy on. Now you can see we can focus an awful lot closer to the lens, closer distance to the actual phone lens. Let's go into our library, we can see our shots again, we can play back any shots um, that we might want to play back. And we've got various tools on the side, I'm not really going to get into this so much, that's just copying. This is again, sharing. Um, this is down sample clip, reduce the bit rate, no, we don't want to do that. This is a little bit of um, various uh, controls we can have, I don't really want to, uh, I want to have the full control um, in post, uh, and uh, some contrast. cut some clips here um, so we will come out of this just to show you quickly so so thanks a lot for watching I hope it's been useful you can download filmic pro and have a play with it yourself um, but these are the most important manual features and things that you'll want to be able to take full control of in capturing the best quality image possible from your phone and we're gonna get into post-production and color in the following tutorials if you've enjoyed it, please uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. I'd appreciate that very much, and we'll see you next time.